Hi, this is Andy Moore Crispin with your Butterscotch.com tutorial series on using your new iPad, iPad 101. And this is the bonus episode where we're going to talk about our 10 favorite apps for the iPad. So let's get right into it. We'll, be link we'll put links to all these in the show notes on Butterscotch.com. So first up is Drawing Pad. Now this is a very simple uh, drawing application that lets you or your kids just kind of draw on your iPad screen. Take advantage of the, um, the improved screen real estate that you have. You can tap any of the tools, tap, uh, tap again to choose the color. And you can just start drawing with your finger. You can also choose things like stamps. You can draw through like this. Pencil crayons, paint brushes. You can choose from some stickers here. So this is a, this is a good one for kids. And it's also a lot of fun if you're uh, all grown up, as we are, arguably. Next up is Twitterific, which gives you a multi-panel access to your Twitter feed. So you can see here, we can see all tweets that are coming through. We can also uh, choose to view any at mentions that we've had, any direct messages, our uh, favorite people that we're following. Uh, we can also check out trending, t uh, trending tags, or hashtags that is, and we can also see hashtags that we've been following recently. Get right out of there. Next up is Tap Tap Radiation. This is a free game, and it's a music-based game. Uh, basically, you just tap, uh, tap the areas on the screen in time with the music. So you can see, for example, we'll play this one here and play it on medium. And you'll see the, uh, the so some of the songs are pretty decent. And like I say, for a free app, uh, you can't really go wrong. So all we really have to do is follow along as, st as stuff starts flying at the screen. Just like that. It's good fun. Now next up is the Marvel application that's been getting a lot of buzz. This is a really cool way to, uh, to actually access your comics. I don't mind showing you my password because it's going to be changed today. So we can actually see, in this case, we're looking at uh, a comic that we've downloaded. We can pinch and zoom. It really is a, a very pleasant way to read comics, second only perhaps to actually having the physical comic uh, in a hard copy uh, sitting in our hand. This is a good way for comic collectors who actually own copies of comics to, uh, to read their comics without actually worrying about um, taking them out of the mylar or doing anything like that. Next up, we have the iBooks application, which we looked at in one part in this tutorial series. This is a, a new way to, um, to look at your books, a new way to read books, a new way to access book content. You can see here, Winnie the Pooh comes free on the device, and you can uh, scroll through like this, read the, um, read, the app, read the words on the page, view the pictures, a lot of fun. And we'll put a link to the, um, this tutorial, the part in this tutorial series that actually relates to iBooks, so you can get a little bit of uh, more information there. Next up is another book application. This one's called Free Books. Now, while um, the iBooks application does actually give you access to some free books, they're a lot easier to find in this uh, application called Free Books. And you'll also see um, in the iBooks section of this tutorial series that we did, you'll notice that the, uh, none of the free books really come with cover art. In this case, you're seeing that they put a little bit more focus on actually making it a pleasant reading experience. So that's Free Books, and that's a free application. Next up, we have the iWork suite, which we covered in detail in one part in this tutorial series. Again, link in the show notes. That's Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. You can get those, those applications for $10 each. That's a word processor, desktop publisher, a spreadsheeting application, and a way to make presentations when you're on the move. Next up, we have the Scrabble application. We kind of cheaped out here. I'm, I'm actually still using my iPhone version of this application. But uh, everyone knows Scrabble. Everyone knows how Scrabble works. Uh, good fun. And the HD version of the game, which we don't actually have installed here, really does look spectacular. Next up is Harbor Master, another game. Now, this one is um, basically asks you to make sure that uh, all the boats that are coming in get to port safely. So we'll see here we can make it move a bit faster. So as, as guys start coming on the screen, we want to take this guy and put him into an orange dock. Another orange one goes into the orange dock. Purple ones go into the purple dock, and so on. I think my best score on this so far is 48, but I haven't, uh, haven't had that much chance to play it. Next up is an application called iDisplay. Not a lot to show when we're actually um, not connected to our MacBook. This application costs $5, and it allows us to either mirror our uh, MacBook or PC display on the iPad device, 
or we can use the iPad as a secondary display. There's also an application specifically for iPhone. Now, it's a little bit laggy, but it shows some real kind of promise. Uh, and if you want to use it for something like keeping your IM windows open while you're doing other more important things on your main desktop computer, not a bad solution for five bucks. So that's a quick look at our top 10 iPad applications. And that concludes this bonus episode of our iPad 101 series. Make sure you check out the show notes on butterscotch.com for all the links. And uh, make sure you check out all the other parts in this tutorial series. Hey, this is Doc. If you're looking for a cheap and easy way to put your own content on the web, go get domain names from Hover.com. Just visit Hover.com slash Butterscotch and you'll get 10% off and support shows like these. Thanks.